For decades, the world's superpowers sought to build bigger and more powerful bombs. Development of the atomic bomb at the end of World War II began a new race, the race to build the most powerful nuclear bomb. The world went from the 20 kiloton bombs used in the war to the 50,000 kiloton Tsar Bomba tested by the Soviet Union in just 16 years. Then things took a sudden 180 degree turn. Nations are not building big powerful nuclear bombs anymore, instead focusing on smaller ones. But first, this episode's sponsor, the Ridge Wallet. This sponsor was absolutely perfect for me. A few months ago, I stopped using my old bulky wallet. It was really annoying to carry around. When I heard of Ridge Wallet, it was a perfect fit for me. I've been using it myself and I'm going to continue to use it. It's small, sleek, looks good, and works great. Another great thing is it's guaranteed for life. So if it wears down or loosens, you're covered. It also came with this mini screwdriver to tighten the screws if necessary. You also get 10% off with promo code COVERCABAL, no space. Go check them out. That is the Ridge Wallet. The 50 megaton Tsar Bomba had virtually no realistic use. It was large, heavy, only one could be carried by a bomber. It also limited the range of the bomber and had a good chance of the blast destroying the bomber that dropped it. On top of that, there were no targets which require such a powerful bomb, except cities. One bomb alone could likely destroy all of New York City. This means these weapons were designed to attack civilians, something that caused massive outrage at both the Soviet Union and the US. This along with the development of highly accurate delivery methods, such as ICBMs, meant bombs could be smaller, limiting the collateral damage and only hit military targets. And this is key. With extremely precise guidance systems, such as GPS, you can accurately hit a target from thousands of kilometers away. Whereas in the past, you needed larger bombs to guarantee that target would be hit, as they were inaccurate. So you can use much less powerful bombs. Pretty much every nuclear power has shifted from these large, multi-megaton bombs to much smaller, weaker ones. And this is all well and good, as it limits collateral damage. However, they are getting even smaller, which is where the danger lies. After several decades of facing the threat of full-scale nuclear war, the world came across an interesting idea, that of mutually assured destruction. It's the fact that any nuclear attack by one would be met with a nuclear attack by the other, both sides receiving unacceptable amounts of destruction. Based on this, nuclear war never happened. However, it's not always that simple. People often think of a nuclear war suddenly breaking out in a sneak attack or during a crisis, but that is unlikely. The real issue is when would a conventional war switch to a nuclear war? For example, if China invaded Taiwan. Once that happened, the US might come to Taiwan's defense, attacking Chinese military forces invading that country. Then China might begin to attack US bases in the region, such as in Japan and Guam. So, in response, the US then might attack those missile sites inside of China. You can see how quickly such a scenario could spiral out of control and continue to escalate, possibly into a nuclear war. The thing preventing a nuclear war is that there is such a drastic shift from attacking with conventional weapons to nuclear ones, due to how much more powerful they are. This massive change from conventional to nuclear makes it less likely to happen. Both sides know perfectly well if they start using nuclear weapons, than the other would too. But with the recent development of low yield nuclear weapons by the US, the concern is that step between conventional and nuclear is much smaller. The W76-2 has a blast yield of about five kilotons compared to the original W76's 100 kilotons. Five kilotons is still extremely powerful compared to conventional bombs, but not by as much. The worry is that going back to the Taiwan scenario, the US could resort to using these low yield nuclear weapons to win a regional conflict. However, once nuclear weapons have been used, that seal has been broken and could escalate into a full blown nuclear war. Another concern is being able to distinguish between what is the start of an attack with low and high yielded weapons. If they were deployed on any form of missile, be it short range, medium, or intercontinental, a nation would not know if that missile had a conventional warhead, a low yield, or a high yield nuclear bomb on it. This is especially true with the US beginning to develop medium range ballistic missiles and hypersonic glide vehicles, some of which are likely to be launched on top of ICBMs. The fear is that if the enemy doesn't know what's coming, it could assume the worst and become the beginning of an all out nuclear exchange. Another fear is the start of a new arms race. 
with the US, Russia, China, and possibly others, all beginning to further build up their nuclear forces. However, there are arguments in favor of deploying these weapons. They are that these weapons would further serve deterrence, not just deterring a nuclear war, but even a conventional one, for the same reasons stated before. Proponents claim that it would create a fear that if someone launches a large-scale conventional attack, for example, Russia against an Eastern European nation, that the US would respond with low-yield nuclear weapons. And at that point, Russia, in this scenario, would have to make the decision whether or not they want to take it to the next level, full-out nuclear war. And, after all, low-yield nuclear weapons are not new. Both the United States and the Soviet Union operated nuclear weapons of all sizes, from the large multi-megaton bombs to the air-to-air -air Genie rocket with a warhead of just one kiloton, and even nuclear artillery with even smaller yields. However, those have all since now been decommissioned. So, there are arguments on both sides, but regardless of who is right, as you are watching this, US ballistic missile submarines are roaming the world's oceans, some armed with these low-yield nukes. They are already operational and deployed. 